start with the session one. It is circulatory support. I invite chairpersons for this session on the dais. Dr. Ashwin Bhatt, he is senior physician, cardiac care center, Khambat. I now invite Dr. Chirag Modi, sir, who is senior physician, Anand. I also invite Dr. Devang Desai, sir, who is consultant intensivist, Valsad. And lastly, I invite Dr. Jay Patel, who is consultant intensivist, SMS Medical College, Ahmedabad. Speaker for the first session is Dr. Rajesh Mishra, who will deliver e-lecture on Zoom as he is busy somewhere. Dr. Rajesh Mishra, sir, is senior consultant intensivist and internist MD medicine, FNB critical care medicine, EDIC. He is presently ISCCM president. We'll start with his talk. He'll give his talk on Pump Up the Heart, Contemporary Management of Cardiogenic Shock. So good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity and I wish to congratulate the team Karamsad for uh, uh, getting the long-awaited activity done because since last two years things have been totally offline so it was a need of hours uh, and um, I've been asked to start the session with very important topic, cardiogenic shock management because uh, in coming time uh, this is going to be one of the very important pool of patients who are going to be ICU uh, for the various reasons uh, uh, they will need to stay long term in ICU for waiting for the uh, uh, heart transplant and even other condition who takes longer time to recover so different kind of mechanical devices has come so intensivists must get themselves acquainted with the uh, available gadgets as well as available our support. What I'm going to just quickly talk uh, tell you about the what cardiogenic shock is and what is our intent. So when we say somebody is having cardiogenic shock, means there is an inadequate tissue perfusion due to cardiac dysfunction. When I say cardiac dysfunction, this cardiac dysfunction can have uh, with any available ejection fraction. Even somebody can have inadequate perfusion with normal cardiac ejection fraction and you cannot have even cardiogenic shock with ejection fraction of 15 and 20 percent. So it depends upon how quickly and what is the mechanism of uh, cardiogenic shock development. If it has developed slowly over a period of time, if a body, our body has adopted and now uh, there is enough cardiac output, even ejection fraction is low, still you cannot have cardiogenic shock and while if it has developed very suddenly, uh, the crisis is acute, you can have shock even at the EF of 30, 35 or 40 percent. So these things should know. So there are hemodynamic parameters to define cardiogenic shock and they are at least systolic blood pressure below 80 and 90 or 30 meter lower than a baseline for a chronic hypertensive patient with a cardiac index of at least less than 1.8 liter per minute per meter square without support or 2 to 2 liter less than 2.2 .2 liter per minute per meter square with support. When I say support, it means vessel pressure and a drop or mechanical support. And the most important thing which we forget to support is there is a elevated filling pressure. When I'm talking about filling pressure, I just come to know. When we say cardiogenic shock, apart from the NFC classification of the AFC clinical, there is also a division of cardiogenic shock which tell us that stage patient is particularly this we need to know and here also to see nobody mentioned about the cardiogenic shock every parameters are very digital so and we need to know that best which patient is because we need to act in a compensated phase to prevent the development of decompensation that is when patient getting converted from phase B to phase C and that is the time that we need to give adequate support uh, and to treat the treatable cause to avoid the development of going to deteriorating phase of phase of extreme where patient is not responding and get arrested. So this 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 classification you need to know and we must act in all possible way to prevent the development of 
uh, deterioration. One more thing I want to highlight that when we say cardiogenic shock, the support system which we give or medical treatment which give, we give intent is to improve the cardiac output as well as offload the cardiac output, uh, but not to give diuretics. Many a time, the mo any kind of cardiogenic shock patient is given diuretic, which causes xenodilatation and further drop in cardiac output and deterioration. So you have to be very, very careful that when you are giving diuretics in acute LVF and cardiogenic shock is a different game. And uh, in acute LVF also and cardiogenic shock also, once your, killing, once your cardiac output improves, once your blood pressure improves, perfusion improves, then to reduce only fluid overload, there is a little role of uh, diuretics. Otherwise, most of the time, giving diuretic in this phase can be harmful. I need to be extra careful, which we are not. not it is a reflex thing that any cardiac output, first thing we do give it diuretic. That is wrong. And in fact, somebody is breathless with cardiogenic shock. Better to give uh, oxygen and IV support, treat the cause, prevent the development of uh, deterioration. If there is a fluid overload with appropriate blood pressure or cardiac output, then only you must give diuretic. So this is another important thing you have to remember. This division has a prognostic uh, significance. So as you understand that if it goes to D and C and D and E, the outcome and mortality is very high. So the, at the end of the day, cardiogenic shock, what we understand, when somebody develops cardiogenic shock, there is inadequate perfusion. Myocardium is not able to pump out enough blood. That leads to elevation of left ventricular and diastolic pressure, causing pulmonary congestion, hypoxemia, which leads to pro, uh, terrible vasoconstriction. The third mechanism, which is very commonly missed, is the inflammatory mediator also getting related due to myocardial infarction. They further contribute to um, this overall mechanism and lead to the progressive myocardial dysfunction until less, this process is reversed by improving oxygenation, giving an IV to offload the left ventricle and hypoxemia, and if there is a block, to respond. And that's why I'm saying it's very important to give appropriate intervention in this phase to de prevent the development of uh, more myocardial infarction. And this is what I am saying that in normal condition, the pressure volume loop where your LV EDP, um, uh, um, left ventricular endostolic pressure, uh, where it is, is um, enough volume is ejected, this is the total cardiac output. But when LV EDP in, uh, increases due to decreasing LV dysfunction, and the overall cardiac output increase, and there is a vicious cycle of increase, uh, uh, even the contactility is same, decrease in cardiac output, and more and more increase in LVDP, leading to uh, more pulmonary congestion and problem. As I said, the, it's cardiac, uh, the next shock is not only low cardiac output, but the ultimate mechanism is uh, hypoxic state and um, high demand state. So this hypoxic state leads to the activation of Krebs cycle and activation of, uh, uh, and then there's excessive lactate. So when you have a cardiac out, uh, cardiogenic shock, little bit of liver dysfunction and hypoxemia leading to the lactate formation and lactate is going off, you know that patient is worsening this year. As I said that if we divide the overall cardiogenic shock, there can be cardiogenic shock and there can be well perfusion. There can be dry lung, there can be pulmonary edema. If LV, EDP, go, cardiac output, and if you divide the wedge pressure, wedge pressure above 18, and cardiac output less than 2.2, this is the worst phase of the cardiogenic shock. While if lung is dry and ca cardiac conductility is above 2.2, this is a better phase. So we need to have at least knowledge of these two parameters by non-invasive and invasive method, because if the lungs are dry, cardiac, cardiac output is low, or venous pressure is low, less than 80, there is a scope to give fluid challenge and improve cardiac output. If base pressure is above 18 and cardiac output is less than 2.2, uh, you, you have to give an IV support, not the dialysis, uh, not the uh, diuretic. But if cardiac index goes above 2.2 after treatment and there is a fluid overload, then you can give diuretic. So here there is a phase for ventilation and IV support. Here there is a phase for uh, uh, 
in giving um, nodded lane or fluid or in giving and when there is a well perfusion and dry lung this is what we want to maintain so we want to maintain a dry lung with well perfusion in this phase of the pulmonary so, there is a mechanism of pump failure and uh, pulmonary congestion so most of the time if the mean blood pressure is low or systolically less than 90 you do not give the vitamin nowadays other than you give norepinephrine definitely not dopamine be used so it's not like that but you cannot give uh, fluid to cardiogenic shock we need to monitor and there are different ways to monitor which you cannot ex uh, expect everything but what is most important is that when your patient is in cardiogenic shock uh, uh, there is a low cardiac output state, there is a pulmonary congestion. We need to have some surrogate marker to look for the cardiac output, to look for the venous preload, uh, pre that is, and uh, that help us in guiding our treatment appropriately. There are different ways of monitoring, invasively, non-invasively, whatever uh, available to you. But I believe that should, is, at least we should have a non-invasive way of echocardiography or venous look and at least to look for the train we should have an arterial line and uh, lead co op eco monitor to look for the cardiac out monitor in severe case in institution who are putting swan in this kind of uh, condition to look for cardiac output preload after load i think still it is a uh, one of the way and uh, the best in invasive way to look for in an institution. So, swan gun is not completely gone out in bad cases of cardiogenic shock. So, to improve survival, you need to early recognize by the by the, by the the parameters which are objective. You need to give support early. Don't do anything which deteriorates your patient. You need to give mechanical cardiogenic support early and your intervention should be early to rescue the patient. As I said initially, that to manage acute pulmonary edema, if your patient blood pressure is high, better cardiac output, better then only give diuretic, but not like uh, 200 or 300 milligram of diuretic. 20 or 14 1 milligram per kg maximum, or 40 milligram of diuretics are more than enough to take care of pulmonary edema. If you give more, you will have more of the problem. We must take care of the pain which is normally left. We must give oxygen which is normally ignored at this. Nitroglycine only if your cystic blood pressure is very high or cardiac output very high, otherwise no. Norepinephrine to improve the um, mean arterial pressure. If there is a hypovolemic state, as I said, you need to give fluid even the, there is a LV dysfunction if blood pressure is low. Um, low cardiac output state, we have an option of increasing the blood pressure by giving norepinephrine and if blood systolic goes above, uh, mean blood pressure goes above 65, systolic goes above 110, then you can suffer, and even LB dysfunction is low, then you can add the vitamin to that. We need to give mechanical support early, and this mechanical support varies from the IABP to the to the ECMO, or even different kind of mechanical device, depending upon which phase patient is. If there is associated arrhythmias, you need to manage them, uh, brady or trachea, some short shock is better for supraventricular tachycardia, rather than giving uh, amidron or uh, any other medicine because all these medicine medicine has a tendency to precipitate the LV dysfunction and uh, 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 lead to the more diametric condition. So shock support, as I said, the dry lung, cardiogenic shock, medicine, wet lung, cardiac output better, you can use diuretic. If you have a condition where lungs are also wet, Cardiogenic patient cardiac output is also low. This patient needs immediate, uh, initially, an IV support to upload ventricle and redistribute the uh, pulmonary fluid. But first work is to offload the left ventricle. That will improve cardiac output. If that doesn't work, invasive ventricular support uh, with anotropic support. And if your patient is in a phase where a, um, if that doesn't work, then this patient should be given mechanical support early rather than waiting too long to improve cardiac output. If cardiac output not improving with mechanical ventral support, uh, if there is acute MI, you can put IABP, so the trial do not support them. If there is not help, even IAP, then supporting with VA ECMO and combination of IABP does work. And if uh, there is associated complication, even LVAD assist device, then also we are. So, as I was quickly saying, that the, now the data are more in favor of norepinephrine, 
and if that helps in improving cardiac output and peripheral vessel cardiac vessel enough uh, improving blood pressure then that uh, further dobutamine can be added but not to initially encourage it so definitely nitroprusside and milron people are, uh, they, they do not help us so there are very limited medicine which helps us phenylephrine vasopressin no so we are left with norepinephrine and epinephrine as a choice of drug for this so to select the best vaso uh, 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 pressure and as i said that uh, uh, that all the data all the meta analysis goes in favor of not epinephrine very quickly about the mechanism how it does so uh, no time to explain but uh, just to tell you that mechanical ventral support or an iv support which we give which i said that the first treatment should be first uh, line of treatment for any patient with breast cancer due to cardiogenic shock because it offloads your left ventricle improve cardiac output by imp uh, by uh, reducing the left ventricle uh, by re by reducing the transmural pressure uh, just Um, we are need to understand about the transmural pressure if uh, lv dp high and after low is also high the effective cardiac output is less so by giving mechanical, mechanical ventral support rniv we reduce we, we reduce the transmural pressure we reduce the after load and that helps in improving the cardiac output so this is very important even uh, if if pre load is very high and iv support will reduce if after load is very high it will reduce it will redistribute the um, fluid up to certain limit from lung and helps in improving the overall state of the so uh, the if i have to divide by the class of the cardiogenic shock patient at risk they need oxygen support and observation treatment if it is beginning an acute myocardial infarction due to the coronary artery disease particularly in acute state of ibp helps uh, normally we combine lv uh, iabp with big uh, ecmo if it is deteriorating rather than waiting or cardiac is not improving in extreme cases you need to wait for go for the cardiac transplant when you are waiting for them uh, you may need to have ecmo and lv uh, left ventricular assist device in any form which is available in the institution so all purpose of all this is to uh, uh, wait till underlying cause improve or you get uh, Hard uh, to to support patient. So, very quickly, what the treatment algorithm for cardiogenic shock is: treat the cause. If it is viral, treat the myocarditis. If it is CAD, go for angioplasty. If it is valvular, sometime we need to do the invasive or non-invasive support. If it is pulmonary embolism, look which kind of cardiac dysfunction it is. If it is LV dysfunction. Uh, if it, uh, they need if only mechanical ventral support works or you need ivp or we it more depending upon if it is rv dysfunction then you may need to support right ventricular also and there probably sometime we have to combine vvv ecmo or other support or with the help of the vasopressor and the revascularization is needed vasopressor and drug under strict monitoring fluid is not contraindicated but you need to monitor appropriately and give a small elevation of the fluid challenge to improve the overall outcome the purpose is to avoid the development of secondary organ dysfunction reverse the cause and if patient is waiting for the mental support there are certain issues where you can have a medical legal issue can come and you need to be very very careful in documenting in pre hospital setup you have not communicated in uh, there should be a well established protocol to reverse glide the coronary as per the time as we all know uh, time out is very important when cardiogenic shock is reported to you and what is stage and in that stage did you offer treatment as per available evidence so there are lot of uh, available evidence and gadgets to treat cardiogenic shock according to stage and that's why appropriate documentation of the timing and at the time what stage patient has come and what support we have offered in what time should be always documented to avoid us any with any future fall so uh, as i said that quickly whenever a cardiogenic shock patient comes to us go to assess uh, look for the at least quickly uh, initial support if you do not know what is that rather than giving a reflex of diuretic go for the iv support monitor quickly at least put ultrasound and echo look for the ivc look for the 
uh, LV and RV dysfunction. Find the cause. If you find any treatable cause, immediately fix the cause to further progression. If uh, 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 if it is not available, then uh, you can further you can further substantiate uh, substantiate your uh, management by invasive monitoring, which can be the uh, less of the non-invasive, like uh, putting a radial fever lying and monitoring cardiac output by PICO or LITCO. Or if you are expert in putting swam and looking for the venous preload, after load, and cardiac contactivity, everything can be calculated and titrating your fluid and vessel pressure and mechanical support accordingly can be appropriate. But I want to insist again and again in cardiogenic shock that please do not give lasics or diuretics in a reflex rather than put the patient on oxygen and IV, assess appropriately, then you give diuretic. If you are giving diuretic, just for the sake of uh, any LVF, then probably if you have seen and just retrospectively analyzed, probably are going to worsen in your patient. So that is the most important message which I wanted to get, uh, give. Thank you for this opportunity, and uh, I'm, I will be. Uh, I wish all the success for this con. Uh, so that was a, a very good uh, day one presentation on a very core issue of critical care medicine by uh, president and one of the giants in the field. So thank you, Dr. Mishra, sir. And thank you to the wonderful audience for uh, sharing this uh, present uh, presentation talk. Thank you once again, everyone.